we finish the superficial fascia of the pectoral region. Now let us discuss about the deep fascia. The deep fascia of the pectoral region is called as the pectoral fascia. I already mentioned you that the pectoral fascia and the deep fascia is the same. Why it is called as the pectoral fascia? Because it covers the pectoralis major muscle. So if you see the structures here, immediately beneath the breast, you can see the pectoralis major muscle. And this pectoralis major muscle is covered by a fascia called as pectoral fascia. This pectoral fascia is called as the deep fascia of the pectoral region. And if you see more deeper structures, you can see pectoralis minor muscle and above you can see subclavius. In clavicle you studied that the lower surface of the clavicle you can have, uh, you have a longitudinal subclavian groove, right? This longitudinal subclavian groove has two lips, outer lip as well as inner lip. Outer lip as well as inner lip of the longitudinal subclavian groove gives attachment to the clavipectoral fascia. These are the dotted lines are called as clavipectoral fascia. This is the outer lip and this is the inner lip of the clavicle. Okay? The outer lip of the clavicle and inner lip of the clavicle are giving attachment to the outer and inner fibers of the clavipectoral fascia. These uh, outer and inner fibers of the clavipectoral fascia encloses subclavius muscle. After enclosing subclavius muscle, you can see it becomes a clavipectoral fascia. And this clavipectoral fascia again splits to enclose the pectoralis minor muscle. First, the clavipectoral fascia arises from the outer and inner lip of the longitudinal subclavian group and which encloses the subclavius muscle. After it encloses the subclavius muscle, it forms the clavipectoral fascia. After it forms the clavipectoral fascia, again the fascia splits into two to enclose the pectoralis minor muscle. After enclosing the pectoralis minor muscle, again it blends finally with the axillary fascia. Axillary fascia. Again it blends with the axillary fascia. So here actually we are talking about the deep fascia of the pectoral region. The deep fascia of the pectoral region is called as pectoral fascia. Why it is called as the pectoral fascia? Because it is enclosing the pectoralis major muscle. Right. Now let us see the attachments of the pectoral fascia. You can see here superiorly it is giving attachment to the clavicle. Superiorly it is giving attachment to the clavicle. So when you talk about the attachments of the deep fascia that is pectoral fascia, superiorly it gives attachment to the clavicle and if you see inferiorly it continues with the fascia of the thorax and the rectus sheet. Superiorly it gives attachment the pectoral fascia, superiorly it gives attachment to the clavicle and inferiorly it continues with the fascia of the thorax and rectus sheet. And if you see anteriorly, it gives attachment to the sternum. Superiorly, it gives attachment to the clavicle. Inferiorly, it is continuous with the fascia of the thorax and blends with the rectus sheet. And anteriorly, it gives attachment to the sternum. And if you see laterally, we have to study supralaterally as well as infralaterally. Okay. So, let us see here. For example, this is the fascia, superiorly it is attached to the clavicle, right, superiorly it is attached to the clavicle and anteriorly it is attached to the sternum, right, and inferiorly it blends with the rectus sheet and the fascia of the thorax and uh, laterally you have to study in two different ways because it has uh, two attachments, one is the supralateral attachment, one is the infralateral attachment, okay. So, supralaterally, here you have the deltopectoral groove. There is a groove between the deltoid muscle and the pectoral region called as the deltopectoral groove. And the groove immediately beneath the clavicle is called as infraclavicular fossa. So, here the deep fascia crosses infraclavicular fossa, crosses deltopectoral groove and continues with the fascia of the 
deltoid. Fascia covering the deltoid. So, supralaterally, the pectoral fascia crosses infraclavicular fossa, deltopectoral groove, and finally blends with the fascia of the deltoid. And infralaterally, what you have? Axilla. Axilla has a deep fascia called as axillary fascia. So, infralaterally, the pectoral fascia blends with the axillary fascia. So, these are the attachments of the deep fascia, also called as the pectoral fascia. What are the attachments here? Superiorly, it gives attachment to the clavicle. Anteriorly, it gives attachment to the sternum. Inferiorly, the fascia continues with the fascia of the thorax as well as it blends with the rectus sheet and supralaterally the fascia continues with the fascia covering the deltoid muscle and that is supralaterally and infralaterally it blends with the axillary fascia. So this is called as the pectoral fascia or deep fascia of the pectoral region.